Singapore has released tools and resources to help businesses create and deploy AI in a safer way. It's part of an effort to turn the country into a hub for AI trust, something it has been working on since 2019. Nicholas Ng with more. Doctors are on the hunt for Singapore's most prolific killer, colorectal cancer. A telltale sign are polyps in a patient's colon. But timing is everything. Too soon and it's a wasted colonoscopy. Too late and it might develop into cancer. To help, they're testing an AI application that summarizes relevant reports. And it also provides an additional independent second reader who is able then to be able that the doctor can actually refer to to make sure that the clinical decision is a very is an accurate one. But before doctors can rely on it, trust has to be earned. The team behind this app managed to find a way to test its reliability. In doing so, they developed a way to verify AI models that's useful beyond their hospital. We see that there's a lot of potential to actually scale this, not just in the local public healthcare institutions or hospitals, but also in the region. This project was one of many in the global AI assurance pilot. The initiative pairs businesses that use generative AI with those that can test it. Some of the results from this effort fed into a different project, the testing starter kit. Within its 125 pages, this document identifies common ways that generative AI models can go wrong. Take, for example, hallucination, where a model starts to produce incorrect information. Now, this toolkit identifies ways that this could happen, for example, if it's a problem with general knowledge or if it's a problem with specific knowledge that the model is trained to address. Both projects are part of Singapore's broader mission, to be a trusted node in the wider international AI community. Meaningful progress in AI is not just about skill or speed, but how well we align it with the needs of our people, our businesses and our communities. Singapore will continue to partner across sectors and borders because we believe that a trusted, inclusive and useful future for AI must be built together. Mr Tan also noted that building trust involves people from everyday users to employees to integrate AI into their work so that a thriving ecosystem can be built on more than just code. And for more on how Singapore is accelerating trusted and responsible AI adoption and deployment, I'm joined by April Chin, Managing Director and Co-CEO of Rezaro, an AI assurance provider that participated in the pilot. Also with us is Professor Simon Chesterman, Senior Director of AI Governance at AI Singapore. Thanks for joining me this evening. Simon, let's start with you. You know, why is it important that Singapore needs to build itself or position itself as a trusted AI node? And why the urgency? Why now? Thanks, Genevieve. I mean, I think it's pretty clear that AI is going to transform many aspects of the economy. And this is an opportunity and a challenge for Singapore. If you think about Singapore's development, we started as a, as a port for goods in the 19th century, 20th century, transformed into a port for services. And now we want to be a port for data, for AI, for technological innovation. Uh, now, to be an AI hub, you need traditionally three things. You need talent, you need data, and you need computational power or compute. Mm -hmm. But I think what we've discovered is you need a fourth thing. You need trust. Yes. And without trust, none of this will operate, none of this will have value, and none of this will be used confidently by consumers across the ecosystem. And what about the timing? Why, why now? I think we're all aware that uh, in the history of AI, there's been a mismatch between expectations and reality. Mm. But in the current environment, I think we are seeing real value being created, but also real risks. It's almost like there's whiplash between the yeah. utopia and the dystopian views yes. about what AI could achieve or what it could do to us. And so I think we need to stay ahead of that curve. All right. Now, April, what are some of the pain points faced when it comes to building trust in the ecosystem? To build on what Simon just said, uh, in probabilistic systems like generative AI, whatever input that you give, you're going to expect a much wider range of output. And that's why we enjoy the creativity from Gen AI systems. But it also means that you are trying to measure trust uh, in, a, in an environment where there's much higher degree of uncertainty. Mm -hmm. uh, and that means that you will need to find different ways mm -hmm. of testing that. Uh, and I think there is urgency now to 
not just do foundation model testing, but also what we call generative AI application mm -hmm. testing, which is testing the application in the hands of the end users, because new risks can emerge even after you test the foundation model. Has anything surprised you so far in terms of, say, like we talk about pain points? Yeah, I think in our testing of applications, we have certainly see new risk and new variations of yeah. risk. Um, given the variations and prompts that we, we do uh, when we do our testing, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I can share more about some of our use cases um, in the Global AI Assurance Pilot. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So speaking of, you know, initiatives like um, the uh, Assurance Pilot and the Testing Starter Kit, right, um, Simon, how, does, how do these uh, programs, I suppose, pilots, help achieve trust? Yeah, well, and I think we're all familiar with some of the risks associated with generative AI. I mean, the yeah. way I describe it is you should think about AI in a, in a commercial context, a bit like a very smart intern with a drinking problem. <laughs> so you can't always control what they're going to do. You don't know whether when they're drunk, when they're hallucinating. So you've got to check all of their work. Mm -hmm. uh, and in the abstract, I think we've seen examples like notoriously how many rocks you should eat during each day. You should glue things on a pizza. All of those are kind of in the abstract. But as April said, this is quite different when you bring it down to the application level in mm. particular industries. And so what I think the assurance process enables us to do is to go from theory to practice, mm. to look at it in specific use cases where you're not so worried about hallucinations about the number of rocks you need. You're worried about data disclosure, bias, accuracy in your specific context mm. uh, where the risks are commercial risk and there are many unknown unknowns. So I think you want to test that. But in, in particular, you want to test in a controlled environment so you can manage those risks. Sure. April, uh, your company, Rosaro, was one of the companies involved in that pilot, yes. right, for generative AI applications. Um, some examples of what applications were tested and what was your experience like uh, participating in the pilot? Yeah, um, we worked with two companies. One is a global pharmaceutical company. Mm -hmm. Another is a global provider of anti-money laundering solutions. Mm. So I'll talk about the anti-money laundering application. Um, it's great in that it provides you with alerts, with case summaries on when there's potential money laundering and there's intelligent chatbot that you can talk to mm -hmm. to understand the reasons. Uh, but we came in to test two things. One is accuracy. Is it pulling the information factually? Mm -hmm. Because ultimately this evidence can be submitted for regulatory compliance. Mm -hmm. And secondly, what might be the potential for misuse? Yes. And over there, we varied the prompts to see how we can make requests that is against internal anti-money laundering policies. Mm -hmm. um, and one important takeaway that we had is to right-size the testing um, given the use case context. Mm -hmm. And the reason being that uncertainty is a feature of generative AI applications. Mm -hmm. It's not a bug, which means that you can actually do unlimited testing and still never get to 100% certainty, mm -hmm. and that's not the point, mm -hmm. right? So for us, it was very important to understand the risk and reward of the use case, and from there, determine how much testing and what kind of testing mm -hmm. to do. Okay. Simon, picking up earlier on your point about context and context-dependent, how does this complexity then, I suppose, affect the way governments and I think businesses approach AI governance and testing? Well, think about the role that humans play in different sectors. I mean, if you're mm. a, a banker, a doctor, a lawyer, yeah. you have some general education that's in common and then you specialize. Yep. And then if you're working in a bank, in a hospital or in a law firm, you're regulated differently. And I think we're going to see that emerging with generative AI applications as well. We're going to need specific training models and in particular, specific evaluation models. I mean, this is the way Singapore has approached the AI governance question more generally, is rather than omnibus legislation like we saw in the European Union, mm. we've approached it more sectorally. So what do we need to solve in particular sectors? And we'll see that throughout the AI ecosystem, if you like, kind of horizontally across sectors and then vertically drilling down into the training, yeah. the testing, evaluation, and maybe eventually some kind of certification. Right. So... Talking about sectors, you're talking about breadth, uh, horizontal and vertical. Can we even talk about a universal framework, you know, if it's so diverse? So it depends. I mean, I think you will see some general models um, that have, um, that's the aim of many computer scientists, is yeah. artificial general intelligence right. means intelligence can operate across many, many systems. But I think the reality, at least in the near term, is you're gonna need systems of experts. So you will have mm. specific use cases. So the needs that Rosaro has in the financial sector or that a healthcare provider has in the medical sector or a law firm or some other area, um, you're gonna see more specific needs, I think, than just one model 
as, if you like, one, one model to, to rule them all, uh, I don't think we're there yet. Probably we're going to have to focus on solving specific problems in the near term. Okay. All right. And uh, thank you for coming. Those were great insights. And that was April Chin, Managing Director and Co-CEO of Rosaro, and Professor Simon Chesterman, Senior Director of AI Governance at AI Singapore.